from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. It's Only a Closet with Wendy Scott, Timeless Closets and Cabinetry. She joins us again here live today on the podcast to talk more, not only about her work, but also about cancer and the caregiver. So yeah, we're back to a Skeletons in the Closet feature today. Excited to meet uh, her guest, Caitlin O'Neill, who is a breast cancer survivor as well. Uh, First and foremost, let me have Wendy Scott say hello and introduce herself. Hi. Hello, I am Wendy Scott, Timeless Closets and Cabinetry, and um, you can reach me at Timeless Closets and Cabinetry for all of my social media channels, and Wendy at TimelessCC.com. Beautiful. And Caitlin. Hello. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Please How tell us you? a little bit about yourself. I'm good. Thank you. Good. So my name is Caitlin O'Neill. I'm CEO of MC Marketing and Content. I have a micro-influencer account at Miss Chester NJ, um, and I am a breast cancer survivor as I was diagnosed at the age of 28. Oh, my goodness. Now, let me ask the connection here. How did the two of you meet? I actually... so. It, I keep struggling to call her Caitlin because I know her as Miss Chester, and I met her at the closet that I have as my screen. You're kidding. Um, at the mansion in May. So it all ties in, Jill. Um, so I met Caitlin at the preview day for the mansion in May two years ago, and then I've been following her ever since because one of the things I love about her is she's real. Like, she's posting her food, and I just want to go eat for a full day with Caitlin sometime. <laughs> Um, Everybody does, yes. <laughs> so that's how I know Caitlin, um, just by following her. And then, you know, and I had, once we decided to do the, you know, the skeleton episode once a month, I knew immediately I wanted to do cancer on the caregiver because it affects, sadly, everyone. Um, Jill, I don't know, was it your, did your My mom, mom passed, passed from cancer, yeah, seven years ago. She had lung cancer, but sorry. yeah. So you. I have, my husband is 15 years in remission. And he lost his father, his sister, his brother. He has another sister Mm. who's fighting. He lost, um, recently lost a a best friend. Um, My stepfather passed. And then during COVID, my father, just before COVID, my father retired, got diagnosed with cancer, was given three months, made it three years, and then passed. So. You know, I I thought about this episode because you don't really talk a lot about the caregiver. And then all of a sudden, you see this? This book popped up in my Instagram. I'm like, Caitlin, we got to have her on site. So (laughs) I did buy my book. Caitlin's going to sign it. She just. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. I thought she'd be perfect because she actually had it. Um, So you had it seven years ago, right? Yes. uh, 2016. So this year, November will be eight years. Would you mind just walking us through the process and and give us the details of of what happened? Yeah, I'm an open book. So I wrote a book about it, or a chapter in a book about it, and I share it on my Instagram account as well. Um, And so, yeah, so I was, it all starts really in 2007. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and she tested for the BRCA gene, which gives you an 80 to 85% chance of getting breast cancer and then ovarian cancer, usually later in life. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, she tested positive. I tested negative. But I was always just very aware of my body after that. I did monthly self breast exams, which we should all be doing, including men, because you're most likely the one to can't catch your can um, to you know catch your cancer really. Yeah. Um, so I was always aware. And then fast forward to 2015 November, I found a lump in my right breast, and I went to the doctor, and it was a fluid filled bubble, and we got it excised, and everything was fine. And then November 2016, um, I didn't take off from work very much. So I took off to vote, go to the doctor, found the lump, came back. And I said, oh, just a water bubble. Totally fine. Going to go get some sonograms, get the water taken out. Um, And then they wanted a mammogram. And then they wanted another mammogram, another one and another one. So I obviously knew something was wrong. I was 28 at this point. um, And then the nurse called me in and said, so who's here with you? And I said, nobody. I'm just getting the water bubble, you know, the water taken out. Yeah. And then fast forward Uh, to the day before Thanksgiving, uh, my father's 60th birthday, I was diagnosed with stage three HER2 positive breast cancer. uh, Um, And my whole right breast was full of cancer and every single lymph node in my right armpit armpit was full of breast cancer. Um, So my dad had worked at Merck for 30 years. So he knew the head of research at Memorial Sloan Kettering and due to my age, 
they wanted me to obviously go to MSK, which I think is one of the best places to go and one of the best places to donate as well. If anybody wants to donate during this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and so within two weeks, I started uh, chemotherapy because what they're doing now is they're trying to kill the cancer first and then do surgery. So I did 16 rounds of chemotherapy. I eventually changed to Basking Ridge because we live in this area. And then, I mean, long story short, did that. And then I recovered for that. Then I got a double mastectomy. Um, and then I recovered from that. Then I got 30 days of radiation. Then I recovered from that. And then I got reconstructive surgery. Oh. Um, and during PET scans, they usually find yeah. everything in your body. So I had two very large benign tumors around my one ovary. So during my reconstructive surgery, we um, they tried to save the ovary, but they had to take out one ovary with those two large tumors. Mm-hmm. Um, and then regarding the HER2 positive, there's an IV therapy that's not chemotherapy that you would actually do for a year. So it's synonymous with something like tamoxifen. So I was actually going into Memorial Sloan County for another year. Um, and then after that, you know, I'm eight years. Um, I'm still aware of my body and making sure, you know, the first few years, any pain or twinge you think is cancer, um, so I would be going into Memorial Sloan Kettering crying. Uh, but as you move out a little bit further, it gets a little bit easier. I have two yeah. questions. Were you married at that point? And then the yeah. second question is, did you have to fight to get the mammograms because of your age? Because my daughter's friend uh. was requested to get a mammogram and they're telling her no. And she's 29. So I was not married. We're actually still not married. We're together okay. 11 years because I'm just like the man. I'm like, if it's not broken, let's just keep it. Um, and But he had <laughs> moved in. He had moved in seven weeks prior. We had moved in together. Okay. So that was a big test on our relationship. And we look back and we think that that's maybe why we don't care about marriage as much. Because, I mean, I was bald. I was, oh, it was very hard. And so he would either step up or not step up. And he stepped up. And so that was a big thing for us. Um, and then I think, no, with the mammogram, they, because they were looking at the sonogram and they kept looking, they already knew that something was wrong. And so she really just wanted the mammogram to confirm and different angles. They, they, they usually know, you know, they see it and they're Mm -hmm. like, this does not look good. Um, so that was no issue. And I can't even remember if, you know, by, by the time I finished my treatments, I had over a million dollars in insurance claims. Um, We obviously hit the out-of-pocket limit, but who knows how much that even cost, if it was covered or not. That was such a... That's just insane. Yeah. So do... So my husband had leukemia, or he had um, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So they had the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, Mm -hmm. and they have groups that help you financially. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Do they have something like that with breast cancer, or do you... I'm not sure. Um, thankfully, you know, I worked through the entire process until I had surgery. Um, and my parents, you know, thankfully, I honestly just used my dad's credit card for stuff because they didn't want it to be any type of burden on me. Right. Um, and I'm super, super thankful for that. Um, but there also is a twist in there. Um, so when I was going to chemotherapy, my mother was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. Um, so we were going to chemotherapy at the same time. And unfortunately hers got to stage four because everyone was focused on me and she wasn't actually taking care of herself. So that was a big hiccup in everything. Um, she got through that. And then unfortunately two years later was diagnosed with glioblastoma in August of 2019 and passed away two weeks later. So Cancer is everywhere and it's very unfortunate and having been on both sides, to be honest, as the caregiver for her, I mean, I'm the daughter, you know, my brother helped out a lot, but the daughters and the mothers, you know, I was just by her side every freaking second. I can't even remember that whole time period. Um, And being on the outside is much harder than being on the inside because as the caregiver, I feel like you couldn't do anything. Um, and one of the most painful times was when I went to her house in the last two weeks and she was, I went there and I went upstairs mm-hmm. and she was in her room crying. And it was just, I just couldn't imagine the feelings that were going through her knowing that she was going to pass away. It was just such a, like, it's when you think of death, it's just the inability to think past things personally. Um, so being on the inside and going through treatment, you know, yeah. you had to go to treatment, survive, go to the mm-hmm. next treatment, survive go to the next thing. So being on both sides, the the caregiver portion is very tough. Wow. Did you have someone go to all your appointments with you? So you always had 
someone yeah. else writing the notes, asking the questions, paying attention? Yeah, my dad started to come at first because my partner, his name is Kim, but he's a man. It's a family name. Okay. So we had to keep working because um, we need to, the, you know, yeah. have some kind of income. So my dad, you know, he was in his later half of working. So he would work from wherever he worked for Merck. He was a writer and he has a PhD. So he was at first very important for us to have him, you know, hear everything. And actually, my best friend is a PhD in breast cancer research. So she would come, Kim would come, and then eventually when it became a little bit more normal, um, we would have friends come to chemotherapy with me. I was never, ever alone until, I guess, really like the when I was going more for checkups. But, you know, yeah. my in-laws came, my friends' mothers came, wow. so everyone was there. Oh, my God. We goodness. had, um, with my husband, we, as soon as we knew he had a problem, we called and tried to get an appointment um, with Sloan Kettering, because his sister had passed, she had had, and I think this story is a little gray, she had Hodgkin's lymphoma, went into remission, got non-Hodgkin's and passed, mm. leaving little tiny children behind. And um, so when he got sick, he knew. Mm -hmm. So we called, we couldn't get into Sloan for two weeks, so I might have lied and called um, Hunterdon, because they're Fox Chase, and said, we have time of the essence. So they let us in the next day. We were we were there. They said we would give you five minutes. We were there for five hours. Wow. And then when he went to Sloan, his brother went with him. And that way there was always someone asking the question yep. and remembering the story because as the patient, you're just so like overwhelmed. I can only imagine. Um, yep. I made the mistake of reading the last lecture in the middle of all this amazing book. Horrible to read when you're going through that. Oh, yeah, the one never thing, Google. never Google. Yeah, it. the one thing is that, or yeah, Google myself. That's horrible. Um, that I take away when, when because I've been the caregiver multiple times, is that you got to let them be angry, and because my husband, I'm not going to take treatment. He's got massive survivor's guilt, and I'm like, let him spew all the negative crap out of his mouth, mm -hmm. so that all that poison goes away, and then just yeah. pump, and assume he will do the right thing at the end. But um, I have, cl have clients who are patient, ab or they work within the system somehow. And they're like, you know, as a caregiver, you have to know all these little details, like what can they eat? What should they not eat? Yeah. Because it affects your treatment. I don't know. Caitlin, did you have that? Like, were you told what, like we were told not to juice. <laughs> really? So I'm a, I'm a registered dietitian by training. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, during chemotherapy, I actually, you crave a lot of sugar and a lot of people will go back and forth and go vegan because of that. And that, you know, they'll do different things, but well, they I say just, the cancer feeds on sugar, right? Yes, I mean, that's yes. okay. Right. But, and I went back and forth with that, but I love food so much. And even now, you know, people after treatment will do these, you know, go vegan, this. And I'm like, if I die tomorrow, I want to have eaten that delicious brownie. Like, <laughs> that's how I live. That's how I'm going to continue to live. Yeah. Um, but even my mother, she, you know, by the end, she wanted mashed potatoes and ice cream. And uh. I went out anywhere. I, I, if she wanted cocaine, I would have gotten it for her. Of you course. Know, it, of course. That's why. It doesn't, yeah. So, um, but the Cancer Hope Network, I work with closely. So they're actually a foundation that will hook up, you know, current, if you're going through cancer or if you're a caregiver, they'll hook you up with someone who's been through exactly what you've been through. So that's actually something that I would have liked to know about back then. Yeah. Um, so that's super, you know, a great, great thing to, to know about. Wow. All right. Well, let's remind everyone at this time how we could reach you both, please. Would you share? So Wendy at TimelessCC.com or Timeless Closets and Cabinetry. And then Caitlin, you. Yeah, because you're everywhere. Yeah, Caitlin O'Neill, also known as Miss Chester. I'm most active on Instagram at ms.chester underscore NJ. Beautiful. Oh, my Now, is Chester goodness. for your town? Is Yeah, we, we moved okay. here six and a half years ago, and I okay. didn't know it existed. So, but now I'm Miss Chester. Ah! And, yeah, and forever. the book again, you can get it on Amazon, right? Called Good Grief, Heartfelt Stories of Healing and Hope. Yes, yes. There are, there are multiple stories in there. So there's different stories for different people. All right. Well, I haven't gotten to your story yet, but I'm I'm like reading through slowly. I brought it on vacation. <laughs> I love it. So um, what uh, as a caregiver part of it, or, or let's say as a patient part, What's the most important for the caregiver to remember and to think about, aside from the fact that it's not your identity? 
Yeah, as a as the caregiver, I think, you know, as much empathy as possible, of course. I think it's just so hard again being on both sides to really understand what the the patient is going through as the caregiver, so really just stepping back and allowing them to feel what they're feeling. I mean, I think at one point I was after chemotherapy, I was so tired. I like laid on the floor and then he pulled me onto him. I just fell asleep. It was like three o'clock in the afternoon or this other time the family was going bowling and I felt so gross and my wig and everything. And I was like, just leave me here, leave. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, 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 no. And he forced me to go, which he knows, you know, you have to read your partner or your people. So he knew that I needed that push. And by the end, it was a good thing to go. And I apologized to him because it's just, you're not yourself. You become something of the system. So just, you know, taking cues and being aware that kind of stuff is really super, super important. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I mean, clearly to be a survivor, right? To, To be here to talk. What are you most grateful for? Modern medicine, as every Thanksgiving, every, you know, love my family, love my friends, love food. But if there wasn't modern medicine, I would not be here today. HER2 positive is a very aggressive form of breast cancer within Uh, that year. I think I went from, you know, maybe it was there in the breast, mm -hmm. but probably not because they excised the fluid. But within a year, I was stage three. I caught it myself through a lymph node in my armpit. Um, and the IV therapy, I forget what it's called now, um, that I was doing. I mean, without that, I really would not be here. And if, even if it was 10, 15 years ago with such an aggressive cancer, um, so all of the research, you know, all the money that people are donating, um, all the modern medicine and the ability, you know, stage four cancer is not what it used to be. Um, so I'm super thankful for that, but yeah, I'm most, most thankful for modern medicine. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. Go ahead. When my husband had it, so he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was, only, he was, I don't say only, he was stage two. Mm. And then seven years after he was diagnosed and, and good to go, a friend of mine got diagnosed and he went straight to Sloan Kettering. Their treatments were 100% different. Yep. And the effects on my husband's body, still horrifying. But my friend, a- almost zero effects. So oh, yeah. you're, you yep. know... The change in medicine is just so massively ongoing. Yeah. And you posted recently another charity for cancer. Like a, yeah, you just went to an event. Day. What was that? There's the Cancer Hope Network, which is the gala. And then a uh, Diva for a Day is a local nonprofit that treats women who are going through um treatment to a diva for a day. So going to get, you know, if you have hair, I had little hair. I was actually part of it. So my friend nominated me, got my hair done, got my makeup done, my nails, things that I literally had not thought about. Um, So it really gives you a diva for a day moment because you're really just trying to survive, but you also need to take care of yourself. That goes back to the caregiver too. My husband would say, go, go to the hair salon. Just, Just walk away, go get your nails done and then come back. And that yep. was, so he was always thinking that you got to, you got to take care of yourself as well, or you can't take care of that patient. Exactly. Yep. Oh, yep. Wow. And Super the support important. you've had along the way clearly is immeasurable. And that also helps too. And uh, I can't believe it. Wow. Uh, great <laughs> stories, positive stories. And so you, do you also, um, you know, I'm sure, I, I don't know your social media yet personally, right? But you, I'm sure people reach out to you all the time asking you, you know, questions, how you did it and advice. Yeah, you become yeah, a mentor so, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I always say that I went through it. A lot of people, you know, either go towards the pink ribbon or you know, not as much. So I'm more of the not as much. Okay. Um, so I post during you know October, um, and I try to share every once in a while. But I'm more of a, a compartmentalization person. So it's like in a box over here. Um, but people do reach out. I met with somebody for coffee the other day just to support them during it, um, and just. Uh, one thing I'll have to say is what I always said to myself going through it, this too shall pass. Like the things that I had to go through, like I had um, things coming out of my body, the fluid after surgery, we had to take the fluid, the bloody fluid out every night. We had to measure it. I'm like, how did I have these tubes coming out of my body and just like going on with life? So the things that your body can do and modern medicine and strength, that is what is going to get you through what you're going through. 
God bless. Thank you so much for sharing this. And Wendy, I know we have our, all have our own skeletons in the closet, right? And I love that yes. she started this series to help people, you know, to really talk about what's going on in the world and <clears throat> to really make a difference in others. So I commend Wendy on that, you know, for, for doing this so much and not just talking about her amazing business, which, of course, I want to talk about. Uh, but really, thank you for being so selfless and taking the time out of your own podcast series to <clears throat> make, you know, this in a form session for so many inspiring thank you thank you, thank you. look your, your shirt came too jill oh my gosh you, you have to send it to me yes. i have mine on oh and my i got gosh. yours okay 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 I, you need my address right i do and and, i'm gonna send it to you have a hat for you too are you serious oh yeah my. i've had that for a while for you a little uh, trucker hat. okay well i'm gonna <laughs> send you my email right now you chat one second while i send you an email go 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 oh my absolutely. gosh absolutely i don't want to oh, forget right, so, okay, <laughs> and um I always say, like when my husband and I, for it, the first time he brought home a, he brought home an ad for a classic car. And he goes, what do you think? I said, absolutely. D- don't save the good wine. Life is yeah, short. Yeah. And um, so that was, that was one of my, my favorite messages. Life is short. Don't save the good wine. And yeah. I'll get him a gut bottle of wine and he'll stick it in the closet. And I'm like, no, no, no. You know, life is too short. You yeah. know, look, at, look at your father. Look at your brother. You know, look yep. at you. You, you, can't, you can't do that. Um, you got to enjoy life as well. I mean, don't be reckless, but you got to enjoy life. Um, With, with my father, one of the most poignant moments for me is, I don't know if you would have read read this, but I'm sure Jill has read the book. um, I'll love you forever. No, I have not. I have not. You have not? No. Okay. I keep a copy for me and a copy for my son. It's about a mother and a son. And she rocks this little boy every night before bed. I'll love you forever. I'll love you for always. Something, something my baby will be. And it shows this child grow through life. And, you know, she she will sneak into his room as a teenager. He's, you know, as a baby, he's throwing, you know, cars down the toilet. And he's just he's a typical boy. And mm. at the end, it shows the boy then sneaking with a ladder into his mother's house and picking her up cradle style, singing the song backwards to her and putting her to bed. And the last time I saw my dad, Aww. I picked him up cradle style because he couldn't get into bed. Oh. So anyway, Caitlin, you talk for a sec. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Just get the make, book. <laughs> yeah, making sure that you're living life to the fullest and saying I love you to everybody. You know, whenever I get off the phone with people, I love you. You know, growing up, I went through a period in college where I gained the freshman 15. I went on a diet. I ate boiled chicken. And now, you know, those things literally don't matter. Nobody cares about that kind of stuff. Nobody cares about you as much as you think that they do. So just do whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. Wear the lipstick. Wear the heels. Eat the cheeseburger. Do whatever you want. You know, everything in moderation because you could die tomorrow, you know, from cancer or not. Or, you know, it could die in a year, but just live life to the fullest because this is all that we have. Oh. I will tell you, we were just at the mansion in May doing the preview. And I was with a with a, a lady, an assistant, and I was with one of the tours, one of the ladies for the mansion. We had this conversation. I said, Caitlin is, I, I didn't call you Caitlin because, again, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> um, I could, Miss Chester is on it. And we're like, oh, my God. We were both, she and I, we love Miss Chester. She's just so real. Mm-hmm. So if you are not following her on Instagram, please do. Because she's amazing. I love watching her, you Thank know, her you. food stories and her what to wear stories because she's not, you know, filtered and she is she's truly oh authentic uh, yeah. just such a nice message when you're seeing um i did notice if you i don't know if you saw this um this er, earlier in the week they said that cancer breast cancer is hitting the ladies younger and younger and younger mm, while it is a um a lot more treatable yeah. and curable it's hitting them at younger ages which is why when my daughter told me yesterday that her friend couldn't get her mammogram Mm-hmm. I was like, are you kidding me? Terrible. Terrible. It's yeah, it's so crazy. I know we only have a well, couple yeah. minutes left. I couldn't I couldn't I missed this part, but so I am BRCA positive because my dad has it. Okay. So I have two strands. So insurance only covered to pay for my mother's strand of BRCA to test. And then I was diagnosed and they were like, this is really odd for a 28 year old. So then I got tested for all of like any type of mutation. And my dad was diagnosed and then his sister tested. She had it. So she got her ovaries out. And then 
there's a whole lineage of, you know, what we think. I mean, it was on both sides. So, I mean, my, yeah. So you have to be your own advocate. Not great for me, but, um, so I have to have, I have one ovary left. So I have to have that out by 40. to. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'll say this for everyone. Cancer sucks. It does, right? I just lost my uncle uh, two months ago to um, esophageal cancer. And he was 65. Uh, oh, and you just never yeah. know. You just never know. And it's just, uh, life is so precious. You just got to live each yep. day to the fullest and just be kind yep. to people, right? What are some of the yep. things as a cancer survivor would you say to those out there, right? Because you've lived it. How has that changed your perspective on life and family and work and everything? Yeah. It took me in the last few years. So I, I, I'm full-time in my own business. Um, so for the last two years, I've been full-time. And slowly I've been realizing that, I, you know, work was number one. It was above my well-being. It was above my partnership, you know. And let me just tell you, it's not as important as you think it is. And getting all the money and growing in the company, I was always just trying to grow, grow, grow. And, you know, just living a simple life and yeah. enjoying yeah. the little things is super important. And you never know what someone is going through. Um, so, you know, just like you said, be super kind to people. Um, just be aware of your surroundings and, you know, just, you know, live life to the fullest, like we've said. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And remind us again how we can reach you both. So you can reach me okay. at Chester on Instagram at ms.chester underscore NJ. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Wendy? Wendy at Timeless Closets and Cabinetry. Uh, It's my handle on all social media platforms. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Beautiful show today. Thanks, Caitlin. So much more than a closet. Thank you. And I'm emailing you right now. Okay, Wendy? Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. See you next week and we'll talk closet. You guys. I'm on vacation next week. Just letting you know. Okay, What's I'll move it week? out again. I am. I'm on vacation next week for my friend's wedding down in Turks and Caicos. So I'll be back the next, unless they put you on with someone else. So it's possible. So maybe they you're not. They only give me you. All right, It's good. only you and me, Jill. All right, great. Then I'll see you then a week from, uh, two weeks. A week from next. You Thank got you, it. sweetheart. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kaylin. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. Oh! And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese! Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.